This video is now in session, and the Labour Party of the United Kingdom was supposed to be somewhat like the Democratic Party of the 2020 election, having a rebound that puts Labour uh, back in the center. But at this point, the Labour Party is in a very bad position. Here is the British House of Commons, which is um, uh, Britain's parliament, and the Conservatives obviously have a strong majority in this um, in this diagram. They have 364 seats. Meanwhile, the Labour Party only has 198 seats, and they lost a lot of seats in the 2019 British elections. Uh, we can go to the United Kingdom general election, and you can see here that um, uh, the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn lost 60 seats, while the Conservatives won 48 seats. If we look at 2017, Jeremy Corbyn won 30 seats, but that was nowhere near enough that he needed. In this election, um, the Labour Party leader lost 26 seats, and here they lost 91 seats. And then in the 2005 election, when they were last in the uh, when they were last in uh, like the majority position, they lost 48 seats. So this loss has been going throughout these elections, and the Labour Party, as a result, have been in a uh, identity crisis. They don't know where they want to go. They don't know if they want to go more to the left or more to the right. Um, if they want to talk more about social issues or about economic issues, and most importantly, who they want to focus on, either blue collar workers or middle class wo um, voters. Because labor in the past has relied on blue collar workers and specifically minor workers along uh, what was the Red Wall uh, in the middle of uh, Britain. So that would be around um, Edinburgh, uh, not Edinburgh, um, L uh, Liverpool, Manchester, that area, um, all, and then going all the way to the east of that. Uh, that's the area that the Labour Party has been specialized in. But in the 2020 election and in previous elections, uh, yeah, in, the pre in previous elections as well, it's gone more and more for conservatives, which presents a very bad problem for the Labour Party because they no longer can rely on their core constituency, uh, which is the Red Wall area, which is this area, um, especially with the mayoral elections in Hartlepool uh, and when it went to the Conservative Party, when it flipped from Labour to Conservative. So um, it's unlikely to see that... Uh, the Labour Party will continue to be an identity crisis. They still have time to post a new, I guess, um, new identity before the 2024 elections, which happens in four years or three years, actually. But Keir Starmer, the current leader of the Labour Party, is running out of time uh, in order to get something in the table for the Labour Party because the Labour Party is continuously fighting within each other, figuring out what it wants to do. And many of them want to go back to Blairism. The, many of them want to go back to what Tony Blair did because Tony Blair was the last Labour leader of the United Kingdom. But the problem with that is Tony Blair was last in Parliament uh, in 2007. He was last the majority leader of the United, uh, or I guess Prime Minister, I mean, of the United Kingdom in 2007. So... Um, 13 years, 14 years, That a lot happens in politics within 14 years. So going back to Blairism, there are a lot of flaws with uh, Blair's ideology in this current day society, especially with his economic policies. And Keir Starmer wants to go back to that, but it's not really the best idea for the Labour Party to do that. So in that case, what should the Labour Party be doing? Um, because it really hasn't figured out what it's done yet. Uh, it should position itself where it currently is, which is uh, more to the left, kind of similar to the Democratic Party of today's, um, oh yeah, today's Democratic Party in the United States. And what it should do is first actually post a manifesto of what it wants, because a lot of policies, Labor has no policy. The, the, the only goal that Labor part, the Labor Party has is to beat the conservatives. They don't really have any idea about policies, and when people ask about them, what are their policies, they don't really answer um, anything concrete. They don't answer anything about the 
uh, substantial issues that face the United Kingdom in t- today's society. So the fact that they don't have a policy or a man- manifesto that needs to get sorted out first. And the thing is, um, they have to start focusing more on the middle class voters. And it's somewhat also indicative of uh, today's Democratic Party, where the Democratic Party has relied for a long time on the Rust Belt, on blue collar workers, somewhat similar to how the Labour Party has relied on blue collar workers along the, the, the Red Wall. But in present years, the Red Wall has gotten more Republican, or I mean more conservative, just like how the Rust Belt has gotten more Republican. So uh, Keir Starmer needs to start positioning himself more towards the middle class, to the areas of London, to make sure that he can have a strength, uh, he can have a majority for a long term, so that the Labour Party can be prosperous for a long term, since the minor area in New uh, in uh, England is starting to die. The less and less people working in the mines, and thus less and less people in blue collar jobs. The middle class is the future of Britain, and that's who Labour Party should be focusing on in future elections. Now, there is still this big fight, though, whether to focus on uh, blue-collar workers, the core of their constituency, or if they should start moving over to the middle-class workers. And there are arguments for both sides. Blue-collar workers, easier to get back for Labour Party because they have been the core of their constituency, but it's not really a long-term, it doesn't give them a long-term prosperity. Uh, and the second thing is Labour Party is already doing really bad. They can suffer a, a short-term failure, uh, short-term additional failures in order to get long-term success with middle-class voters. If they contact middle-class voters and go to them and build it, uh, and start to build an infrastructure for uh, their campaign. But they're still fighting. <laughs> they're not doing anything. And Keir Starmer was supposed to be the future of the Labour Party. Um, if we go to his Wikipedia page, come on. It, 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 there we go. So we're at his uh, Wikipedia page, and he wa- was the leader of the opposition, or he is the leader of the opposition, and he took control on April 4th, 2020. This was when Jeremy Corbyn was suffering a lot of scandals, and he was kicked out of the Labour Party under bad leadership. And Keir Starmer was supposed to be some, uh, a new face for the uh, for the United Kingdom, but he's seemingly more and more like keeping up with the status quo that happened under Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party in his later years as uh, leader of the opposition, which just infighting, constant infighting as to what the future of the Labour Party is. And Keir Starmer, um, even though I, I know he wants to make the right decisions, but he has to take risks and he has to take decisions or else the Labour Party has zero chance of succeeding. You don't have any chance of succeeding if you don't stand for anything compared to standing for something wrong. So that, that's the situation happening with the Labour Party at this current moment. Um, and as of now, if the, the things continue to stand, they are looking for a very bad 2024 re-election. Uh, but we'll have to see if they end up like um, if they end up continuing to end up like this and maybe even dissolve their own party if they or if they might have the rebounds that the Democrats had in 2018 and in 2020. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned and I'll see you in the next one.